present that way too. So once you stabilize the patient with the resuscitative measures that I mentioned about giving the patient fluids and everything, you stop the active bleeding and your main goal is to stop the active bleeding and then you prevent further re-bleeding. Uh, we'll talk about the several procedures depending on the etiology. So um, once you resuscitate the patient, the diagnostic tool of choice is gastroscopy, which is the upper gastrointestinal endoscopy, uh, EGD, that's what they call it in the US, OGD in, in uh, the British system is called OGD versus EGD in the US. So once you do the endoscopy, depending on the etiology, uh, you can do endoscopic uh, therapy for the specific etiology. So the timing is very important. In a hemodynamically unstable patient, the most important timing is to resuscitate the patient and then do the specific endotherapy rather than just jump to do an endoscopy in a crashing patient who is pulseless and who also does not uh, have uh, recordable blood pressure. You don't jump to do an endoscopy because resuscitative measures measures uh, take precedence over doing an endoscopy. That's why timing is important. And then also visibility of the blood vessel also plays a big role. That's the reason why we use a lot of prokinetic agents, especially for endoscopies. Um, we give uh, metoclopramide or we give erythromycin 250 milligrams IV stat dosage to increase the motility of the stomach so that the patients can empty their stomach out, increase the gastric emptying time for better visibility of the, uh, you know, the blood vessel or the, whatever the source of bleeding is. So, um, so um, coming to the specific etiologies in upper gastrointestinal bleeding, uh, we'll go one by one, uh, the several etiologies. Esophagitis, which is, uh, again, esophagitis, the British way of saying it, OE. Um, it's usually not such a common cause. It's about 10% of the cases. They usually present with coffee ground emesis. The elderly patients uh, with severe esophagitis, uh, bedbound patients, the nursing home patients, the renal failure patients, or chronic reflux patients, or the gastroparesis patients, they come in with coffee ground emesis. Um, so you need to understand that esophagitis is a very common cause in these patients. Treatment is usually aimed at the cause, which is usually acid reflux as a cause. So like I said before, Mallory Weiss tear is another common cause uh, for, acute, uh, for acute gastrointestinal bleeding. Uh, it's usually nothing but a tear in the esophagus at the esophagogastric junction, which is a mucosal laceration or tear. Uh, it causes, it constitutes, constitutes about 10% of the cases it constitutes, typically follows retching, following a binge of alcohol or whatever the cause is, but quite a few of the times it is usually after the first vomitus. So 90% of them, they stop bleeding spontaneously. Yo, okay. And the majority of the time endoscopic treatment um, may be required uh, but not all the time, majority of them are self-limited. Sometimes you can do endoscopic therapy by doing an endoscopy, you inject adrenaline at the site of the Marilyn Weiss tear. We usually put an endoscopic clip uh, on top of the tear in the esophagus to approximate the tear so that they don't have any further bleeding. So the next cause of upper GI bleeding after, after esophagitis, after the uh, Mallory Weiss tear would be the uh, portal hypertension induced bleeding. Portal hypertension is nothing but increased pressures in the portal system, which usually happens, which usually happens as a consequence of uh, uh, chronic liver disease uh, so some of the causes for bleeding in patients with portal hypertension would be varices, esophageal or gastric varices. Uh, portal hypertensive gastropathy, which we commonly call as PHG, is nothing but punctate areas of bleeding noted throughout the stomach and sometimes even in the duodenum also, uh, also seen sometimes in the colon called port portal hypertensive colopathy. So, but we're talking about upper GI right now. So portal hypertensive gastropathy is another cause. So any of these patients who come in, what do you do after, res after resuscitation? You do the endoscopy. If it's uh, 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 an esophageal varix, if it's an esophageal varix, you do the band ligation where we put the rubber bands on top of the esophageal varices. I'm going to show you some good pictures later on where you put the rubber bands to stop the bleeding acutely. Sclerotherapy is another thing where we use uh, alcohol or sodium marvate or cyano cyanoacrylate blue, specifically used for gastric varices or the upper gastrointestinal uh, varices, the esophageal varices where banding may not work or they have the ulcers from prior banding where we use the sodium, sodium marvate or alcohol as some of the things or um, we or cyanoacrylate glue or some of the things we use. 
glycopressin or terlipressin is another medication that you use to decrease the portal hypertension. Next after this comes balloon tamponade and someone who cannot, you, can, you cannot control using uh, the um, uh, band ligation or sclerotherapy, then you go to the next modality, which sometimes can be a last ditch effort, such as a balloon tamponade with a sink stake and Blakemore tube. Uh, not used as much nowadays with the advent of radiological procedures, but something to keep in mind. So a picture of uh, the first picture to the top left is an actively bleeding varix in the esophagus. You can see the spurt of blood coming out from the varix. Do not get flustered when that happens. Stay calm, composed, and you load your the uh, endoscopy uh, tube with uh, bands, the rubber bands, that you, the blue colored ones that you can see on top of them. That's the band ligation that we perform on these varices to stop these uh, from bleeding. Uh, the bottom left is a clip that you see on top being placed on top of a Mallory Weiss tear. Uh, the next picture in the middle is something that you see for a sink taken Blakemore tube where you have a gastric balloon and an esophageal balloon um, where the gastric balloon gets inflated in the fundus of the stomach, which holds the, and uh, all, what they do, they tamponade the esophagus and the gastric uh, varices providing control of uh, bleeding. And uh, you apply weight to the opposite end of the sink stake and Blackmore tube so that you, um, you tamponade the lower esophageal area. And the, the picture to the right is uh, a TIPS, T-I-P-S-S, -S, that you can see at the bottom right. Uh, it's a transjugular, TIPS stands for transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic stent shunting. So you go through the jugular vein and you place intrahepatic inside the liver, a communication between the portal and the systemic circulation to decrease portal pressures. That's the reason why it's called a TIPS procedure done by the interventional radiologist to acutely decompress or decrease the portal pressures in someone endoscopic therapy or other measures have not worked. So um, after varices, after varices come duodenal and gastric ulcers, which commonly called as pep peptic ulcer disease. This probably is the most common etiology for upper, gas for upper gastrointestinal bleeding. So duodenal bleeding probably is more common than gastric or stomach bleeding. Some of the, some of the predisposing factors for bleeding in these cases would be non-steroidals, non non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, such as all the, you know, um, uh, Advil, Advil, Aleve, Motrin, Ibuprofen, and all the Proxen and all these patients. But that's the reason why you have, the, you, ha you have these COX-2 inhibitors that have come up, which have a much lower risk of bleeding. What they do, not only do they have a corrosive effect, they also decrease prostaglandin synthesis as a result of which the bicarb secretion would go down, which actually acts as a protective mechanism. So that's the reason why NSAIDs cause more bleeding. NSAIDs cause more bleeding. Underlying medical conditions such as, such as ischemic heart disease, cerebrovascular disease are important because these patients tend to be more likely on anticoagulant treatment, which can predispose you to bleeding. And uh, prior history of hospitalization also is important because they can give you some clues towards prior medications they would have taken. So what is the role of gastric ulcer in these bleeding patients? Uh, you know, gas hyperacidity conditions can also predispose you to bleeding. That's something you need to remember. Uh, H. pylori role of bleeding uh, in is a little controversial. Um, it's not certain whether H. pylori causes uh, bleeding, but there has there have been several studies that that have shown that have shown that eradication of H. pylori definitely prevents rebleeding in a lot of patients. So. Um, Aspirin and NSAIDs, like I said before, more so they cause more so they cause gastric bleeding than duodenal bleeding. Dose dependent risk, the higher the dosage, aspirin, aspirin 7, 7, 75 milligrams versus 325 milligrams. The risk of bleeding is higher with a higher dosage, 325 milligrams. Uh, preparation dependent, the enteric coated ones have a less risk of bleeding. The non-enteric coated aspirin has a higher risk of bleeding. So that's why that's why the preparation. Uh, plays a big role. Higher older age individuals also have a higher risk of bleeding because the prostaglandin synthesis. So up, uh, synthesis uh, is lower, is lower in the elderly patients. So what are some of the endoscopic signs which predict re-bleeding in these patients? If there is active bleeding at the time of endoscopy, they have a very high risk of uh, bleeding. If there's a visible vessel, 
um, the risk of bleeding is about 50%. If there's an adherent clot, the risk of bleeding is about 30%. Black spots, risk of bleeding is about 5%. So this is only to characterize the risk of re-bleeding uh, based on uh, the endoscopic findings. So how do you manage? First thing you do is start the patient on IV PPIs. So I'll tell you later on the role of how IV PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, uh, help. The proton pump is the final step in the acid production. These uh, esmaprozole, lansoprozole, uh, pantoprozole, and all these medications, azole medications are the proton pump inhibitors. What they do, they increase the gastric pH levels because lower gastric pH means hyperacidity and it prevents a blood clot formation. Higher the pH from proton pump inhibitors due to gastric acid inhibition, the clot formation is much faster and higher as a result of which the bleeding also goes down. So you start the patient on IV PPIs first, you start endoscopic injection therapy or coagulation techniques, or you do, if those two are not first after medications, injection is not helpful, then you go for coagulation, which is a dual modality therapy. Then if not, you go to angiography and embolization done by the interventional, by the, by, done by the interventional radiologist. And the next line, if none of these work would be...